Ladies and gentlemen, the time is here. How to Train Your Dragon! Got a live action trailer. The world has been on pins and needles. Basically, the whole, the whole earth was teetering on an axis waiting for this film to drop to get everything back in alignment. Did it do the job? Are we gonna get the film we've all been craving? Well, we did. We got the film, you know, like a decade ago when it came out. I, it's obviously been longer than a decade since How to Train Your Dragon hit theaters, but I don't remember anything past yesterday, so give me some credit. Why are we doing this? That's the question I have. Why are we doing this again? Outside of money, which is truly the only reason, I have to do a rant here on not just How to Train Your Dragon, but the real reason we're even getting this live action movie, and it's all because of stupid, greedy Disney! Should have saw the signs. <laughs> when John Favrasaurus Rex came out with that Jungle Book live action movie, it was all over. State of the art animation. Graphics were next level. Lifelike creatures running around, talking to a little boy swinging from fake vines on fake trees in front of a green screen. And it was a good movie. It was a good movie. Because it was different. It wasn't the same. There was no shot for shot stuff going on here. We had Mowgli still in familiar settings with familiar characters. This was a darker peek into what happened. This was more of a Lion King-esque storyline and less a Jungle Book that we grew up with. Not really any music, not a ton of whimsy. It was very, very serious, very real. It made use of the special effects, the live action -y look, that National Geographic feel. But that was just a taste of what was to come. That was a precursor to a much worse timeline that we were going to find ourselves on, friends. They had the right idea, and it wasn't the first time it's been done. There's been other live action Disney movies that have come and gone. 101 Dalmatians, 102 Dalmatians, the Glenn Close vehicles as Cruella de Vil. Those came out back in the 90s. There's been other examples, but I don't remember them. But they're there, trust me. We got a couple Maleficent films with Angelina Jolie really taking a different viewpoint, really taking a different vantage, twisting the story, making the villain almost as an anti-hero. I'm not typically huge on that, but if it works, it works. And I gotta give them credit where credit is due. Those Maleficent movies are fun, but they were few and far, and they had uniqueness to them. They told a different kind of side of the story. They went different routes with it. But then after the Jungle Book, something changed. What I don't like, what I can't stand, are the remasters. Because that's kind of what they are at the end of the day. They're video game remasters. The Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, How to Train Your Dragon. Now I know the movie's not out yet, but I saw the fucking trailer. Every everything in that was storyboarded from the original. I saw the shot of the dragons flying through the tunnel. I saw the shot of Hiccup touching Toothless's stupid head and turning away. Eh, don't eat me. I already saw this movie. It was amazing. The whole How to Train Your Dragon trilogy is a phenomenal film, series, franchise, whatever. They're making an island of Burke over at Universal Studios. It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be majestic. Do you think for a second it's gonna have the live action characters featured prominently? Hell to the no. I was at Disney not that long ago. Guess what I didn't see there? Live action shit. It's still the cartoons. Sure, the kids might be amped up to go to the new ones. Sure, your parents want to bite off a piece of that nostalgia cake. But it's all empty calories. When you leave them, do you get the feel? Do you get the satisfaction that it was better than the animated classics? Or was it just familiar enough to satisfy you? Did it do anything new and groundbreaking, earth shattering at all? Or is it just the same exact story told in a worse package? The Little Mermaid. Oh, this Ariel looks different than the cartoon. How profound! How amazing! That's not enough. It's not enough, Disney. 
make new stories. Sure, you can use the same properties. You've done it before. I just pointed out a couple you did in the past. Do more of that. There's more angles. Look at Wicked. Wicked's coming out soon based on the hit Broadway plus the book. It takes a different spin on the Wizard of Oz. And yes, of course, the lessons learned are not necessarily the right ones because the last Lion King live action movie made well over a billion dollars. It's in, I believe, the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time. That's depressing to even say out loud. So, of course, DreamWorks is going to look at what Disney's been doing and they're going to say, yeah, we can do that too, fam. And we're going to do that too. We're going to do that too. God, how scary is it going to be if we get a Kung Fu Panda live action? Oh my God, gross. Jack Black voicing the character again, but this time it's this quasi-realistic looking humanoid abomination. Skadoosh! Starts eating kids. That would actually be cool. That would be something the Winnie the Pooh blood and honey guys do. We have a whole other rabbit hole we can go down. Pun intended, I suppose, accidentally. So not intended in the slightest. I um I hate these movies, I'm not gonna lie. And you might be like, how dare you, Adam? Aladdin was great, it was fun. I, I like The Lion King, I can't wait for Mufasa. I'm excited for How to Train Your Dragon, it looks amazing. They're, they're, they're showing it in a new light for a new generation. The old one still works for a new generation. It still works. They're getting this ugly carbon copy. You know, video games are doing this too. Of course, video games are a different genre and there are differences. Y you play a remaster of an old game from the 90s, you're gonna get state-of-the-art graphics, you're gonna get maybe the same gameplay or updated controls that, that work better because we just have technology that advances them in a much more pleasant way. But there's also a lot of remasters that actually ruin the art of the older game. They actually take what worked before put that new coat of paint on and it, it does a disservice to the art style because guess what? Sometimes limitations are what bring out the best in creativity. Hell, I'd say oftentimes that's the case because if the world is your oyster, there's just too much of it to swim in. You need scope, you need vision. And if we're gonna have AI generating shit on the fly and you can add in like a kabillion little terabytes of data that bring up a bunch of just soldiers and, and you know, whatever effects you want, that's not art anymore. That's some gross new thing. <laughs> but yes, there are modern games that are getting the enhancements and it's worse. Hell, the Spider-Man that came out a few years ago, maybe a lot, I don't know how long it's been, but they remastered it from PS4 to PS5. And in the process, they actually changed how some of the character models looked completely to be more in line with Tom Holland as opposed to more of an Andrew Garfield look, which he kind of previously had. It, it was different, but I would say it was closer to that. A lot of people were not happy with those changes. Yeah, I was kind of put out by it too. I, I, this isn't the Spider-Man I just played as a year or so back. Well, what the hell's going on here? And so when I see How to Train Your Dragon, yeah, okay, it looks, it looks all right. It's not wowing me because I already was wowed when I saw it before and I own the movie and I can put it in right now and I'm gonna get a very, very wonderful experience. What is this thing gonna do that's different? And you could say, hey, you haven't seen the movie yet. How can you judge it? Well, because I have a history now of what these studios have been doing and I have a very strong feeling DreamWorks is gonna follow the Disney playbook. But I will always give the movie the benefit of the doubt, even if, uh, you know, I'm a curmudgeonly old bastard who's been cynical and jaded by this uh, industry for many years. I will still go out, pay my hard earned money, give it a shot and give you a fair review. But that doesn't mean I have to be thrilled about it going in. It can surprise me. It can wow me. And that would be great. I would love that. I would love nothing more than that. But God, there's so much you could do with this franchise. Why didn't they just take How to Train Your Dragon and tell a new story with new characters? Hell, it can be based around Burke. Hiccup can be there, Toothless can be there. There's a lot of time in between these movies, especially between where the third movie started and where it ended off because we kind of get this epilogue at the end that's down the road. There's a lot you could do in a live action setting 
to further kind of like expand out this world in the lore. There was a TV series or a couple, I think, that did just that. You could have told stories from those. You could have pulled those into the films. I'm just saying it really wouldn't have been that hard to do something a bit more creative. That's all. And do I think there's a place for these types of movies? Yeah, I think the best you could do is take a film that didn't previously work, kind of a, a box office bomb, critically panned, audiences didn't really like it. You take that movie and you redo it. That's a perfect candidate where it has a good idea, a good concept that maybe just wasn't well executed and you do that one over. But why would studios do that? Why would they take something that wasn't financially viable the first time and try again? That says to me, they're actually passionate about making this work. And where we're at today, passion is the last thing studios are looking for. And I get comments from time to time that are like, why do you care? Don't watch it. Movie's not for you. Nah. I care because I'm a movie critic, you fucking idiot. I care because I'm passionate about movies and I've seen a stupid amount of them over my miserable time here on earth. And so I want to express my opinion on the internet. What a crazy radical idea, you stupid idiot. That's why I care. And because there are a lot of very talented people that are trying hard to get films made. Creative, smart, sharp, witty, well-written movies. Thought out storylines and, and plot points and worlds. It's a whole vision. But that's getting completely ignored because we gotta make Toy Story 5. Because we gotta make Fast and the Furious 57. And yes, the audiences are there, so why wouldn't they do it? You gotta find a happy medium where you're making sequels, you're doing franchises to bring in the bucks, but we also have to have creativity coming out from these studios more. And it's just not the case. The, the lineup of Disney stuff coming out is depressing. It's all sequels. It's all reboots. It's all live action trash. Hardly anything new. It's just a bummer, that's all. It's just a shame. And we should press them to do better. All right, those are my thoughts. That's my rant. Let me know in the comments yours on How to Train Your Dragon and any other Disney live action. I know this is DreamWorks, but you get what I'm saying. Please like the video. Think of subscribing as I post tons of movie reviews, rants, live streams every week. Would love to have you stick around. And if you really enjoy the content, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Lots of perks there, and it helps this one-man operation. All right, take care.